everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Carolyn, and today I want to talk about the forearm stand, also known as Pinchamayurasana. This is the one that I often get asked the most by students. How can I get into a forearm stand or how can I work towards the forearm stand? Okay, and honestly, with um, any question that is like this, how do I do this? How do I do this pose? How do I do that pose? Usually my first response will be, just practice it. Just do it every day. Maybe not every day, but practice it consistently um, and it will come. However, there are a few tips that we can offer as you're practicing these postures. So for this one, uh, I started practicing this pose since 2014. And I know this because I found like a really old uh, video of myself doing this posture when I first started learning it and it's it was pretty awful if I find it I'll include it here somehow attending yoga classes um, that were so full it was like I don't know maybe 30 people in the classroom so of course the instructor uh, wasn't really able to give each of us individual attention so anytime it was like okay you can do your forearm stand I just go to the wall and start flopping all over the place right without um, really getting um, good tips on what to do and you know at the time I didn't think to look on YouTube because I'm sure there were so many tutorials already back then, but I don't know, it just didn't cross my mind to look there. Um, so those of you who see it now, lucky you. <laughs> okay, anyways, let's talk about the pose. So in this forearm stand, um, optional tool you might want is a yoga belt or yoga strap, okay? So what this is going to do is, for those of you who have tight shoulders, is going to help you to keep your forearms and your elbows in line with the shoulders so that when we're in the forearm stand the elbows don't start to splay out which is often what happens okay so if you are using the strap you make your little loop as wide as your shoulders so that when you slide the loop in right on top of the elbows okay so when you slide it in there your arms will have no choice but to stay shoulders width distance apart. Okay? So, those of you who need it, go ahead and set that up. Okay. All right. And then let's talk about the foundation in this pose. So, I want my elbows on the ground. Okay, like I said before, shoulders width distance apart. Okay. Now, here is the tricky part. I also want my forearms to stay parallel and my palms to be glued down. Okay, however, this is challenging for a lot of us who are not able to keep the arms in that position. If the shoulders are feeling tight, what's gonna happen is the hands start to move in, in, in. That's okay. If the hands are moving in and there's just no way for you to keep them apart, let them move in. But keep this in mind. As your hands begin to move in, okay, make sure the wrist stays straight. A lot of times, you know, the forearms start to move in, but we're fighting it, we're resisting. We're like, no, no, and we're using the hands and going like this, no, don't move in, don't move in. <laughs> you end up with really wonky wrist, which is not gonna feel good in the long run for your wrist, okay? So if the forearm starts to move in, don't fight it, it's okay. The hands can also follow along and keep this part straight and not twisted. Does that make sense? Okay, <laughs> so there's my foundation, okay? And I even start, if you have like a sticky mat, I even start with my elbows a little bit closer than shoulders width, because I know once I enter the posture, the elbows are gonna move out a little bit anyway, okay? Everything else stays the same. And my eyes, I'm looking right on the floor in the middle of my forearms. Curl the toes, lift the hips, and I begin with the dolphin, okay, which looks something like this. So here I'm just spending a little bit of time to open my 
my shoulders by pressing my chest in the direction of my legs. Okay, if I need to bend my knees because the legs are tight, that's okay. Okay, maybe a little step forward. Okay, I usually spend a little bit of time here, five to 10 breaths. And then after that, I'll just work on doing the same thing, but with one leg up, a few breaths there, one leg up, a few breaths there. Can you continue to press down through your forearms? Okay, and take a break. Okay, the next thing I also like to do as a prep before I go up into my forearm stand is to bring a little bit of movement, right, into my dolphin. Dolphin movements, which look like this. I get into my dolphin, okay, I'm looking between the forearms, and then I begin to bring my shoulders forward until my face is above my thumb. And then I push back, okay, slowly forward, keeping the shoulders strong, slowly back. I usually do about five to ten of those, depending on my mood. Okay, and then when I'm ready to actually do the forearm stand, okay, in the beginning, I would practice with a wall, and that's totally fine. So I'll show you how to use the wall. Um, yeah, let's go to the wall. Okay, so I've got my wall here. To start in the posture, I want my hands to actually be pretty close to the wall, right? The further away my hands are, the more I'm gonna end up in a banana shape once my feet touch the wall, right? So I'll show you an example. If I have my hands further away from the wall and I start to go up into it, hope I don't kick this bed. Okay, I go up, 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 up. Oh and I'm looking for the wall, and I just end up in this banana, right? And eventually, I'm afraid that my body is gonna get too used to that shape, and I'll never be able to find straight, okay? So instead, we'll start a little bit closer towards the wall. Okay, I actually have my fingers right up in front of the wall. I'm very close, okay? Now, from here, again, I find that dolphin position, Okay, and I take my feet forward so that my hips start to feel like they're coming up above my shoulders, but at the same time, my shoulders don't start to move forward. I keep my shoulder above my elbows. They're gonna be a little bit forward, that's fine, but just don't go too far forward. All right, the higher away from the ground you can be, the better. The further away your face is from the ground, okay? And then you pick one leg to lift. If your legs don't straighten here, that's fine to bend the knees. Okay, pick one leg to lift, lots of energy through the top leg, so my leg is straight, okay? I'm not gonna swing too much, just a tiny bit of a swing, but my bottom foot is gonna do a bit of a jump, okay? Looking between my forearms, bend and jump, bend and jump, okay? My two legs join if I'm at the wall, I take a moment just to get my shoulders strong again, so I'm pressing, you see how I start to sink here? Don't let that happen. Keep the shoulders strong. Push the floor. Okay, now from here, instead of taking one foot off the wall at a time, which a lot of people do, start to get used to pulling in your ribs, pulling your belly, and allowing both your feet to come off the wall together. Okay. So that's working with the wall, and then eventually coming to the center of the room without the wall, all right? So the thing about having the wall there is that oh, I know it's there, right? When I know the wall is there and I start to lift my feet up, I think it's a mental thing. I just automatically look for the wall, and I'm gonna end up overshooting it, all right? So once you're starting to get feel, get that, Get that strong feeling in your shoulders, in your practice. Start to move away from the wall, you know? And when you're away from the wall, you're less likely to overshoot, right? If anything, you'll start to be a little bit more cautious and not kick so hard. So when you're moving away from the wall, I recommend starting to find 
starting to find more of this shifting of the weight, right? Instead of trying to jump up, jump up a step, do the shifting of the weight and eventually finding a bit more of a lift off, right? Because the more that we jump, the more that we jump, the more we have the possibility of losing control, right? If I can work on my ability to shift the weight slowly and lift into my inversion, then I'll be in more control most of the time. And um, yeah, and that's really it. Okay, so give it a try. <laughs> Let me know what you think. Have fun.